I'd like to talk to you today about it's a choice. A choice. Uh, Ephesians 4.32 says, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, through, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And in our daily uh, relationships, in our daily walk, we often come across people that have faults. This morning I woke up thinking about somebody in my life that had done some things wrong toward me, and I thought, you know what, it's okay, I'm just going to forgive them. But you know what, it's a choice for you today to decide what you're going to do with those faults, and that's what this whole uh, little program is about. I got a couple stories I'd like to read you. Uh, from the internet it says, I like the story of the little girl who came home from school proudly carrying a notebook full of schoolwork. She climbed into her daddy's lap and happily turned page after page, marked with A's in the right hand corner. She was beaming. Finally, she came to a page that was not as neat and there was no big A there. Her leaking pen had left two large blots in the middle of her work. Qu quickly, she put down two fingers, one to cover one blot and one to cover the other. She looked up into her father's understanding eyes and pleaded, please don't see the blots. Not seeing the blots and being careful not to criticize are two ways we can strengthen our relationship with others. Uh, Henry Ward Beecher said, every man should keep a fair-sized cemetery in which to bury the faults of his friends. You know, if you wish to uh, master the art of working with people, you need to overlook their faults and flaws. And you know what? That's a choice. It's a matter of your perspective, and you can choose to overlook them. Another story was an old Missouri farmer, too old to farm, who passed the time sitting on the fence watching travelers heading west during the 1800s, seeking new, new opportunities and looking for a new life. One day, a wagon stopped, and the rider shouted, We're moving west and looking for a place to settle. Tell me, how are the folks around here? Well, how are the folks where you came from, the old farmer asked. The settler replied, The folks in our town were the rudest, most unfriendly people we have ever known. How are the people around here? Oh, said the farmer, about the same. A few days later, another wagon came by, and the driver asked the farmer the same question. How are the people around here? Once again, the farmer asked, How are the folks where you came from? The settler said, Why, they are the greatest people in the world, warm, friendly, and generous. How are the folks around here? The old farmer replied, Oh, about the same. You know what? People are about the same as we perceive them and about the same as we treat them. People are blots and all. You know, how many times did God use imperfect people in the Bible? Noah was a drunk. Abraham was really old. Jacob was a li liar. Leah was ugly. Moses stuttered. Gideon was afraid. Samson was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Jonah ran from God, and John the Baptist ate bugs. Yuck. Peter denied Christ, but God still used all of them. We've got to learn that the people around us are not perfect, and we've got to choose what we're going to do with the flaws and faults that we see in them. Today, ladies, if as you're going through, you're walking in your life, if you come across somebody and they do something wrong against you, what are you going to do with that fault? Uh, an ancient Mideastern proverb says, the wise man restrains his anger and overlooks insults. This is to his credit. You know, he who grows in grace remembers that he is but dust, and he therefore does not expect his fellow Christians to be anything more. He overlooks 10,000 of their faults because he knows his God overlooks 20,000 in his own case. When our virtues become more mature, we shall be more tolerant of infirmity, more hopeful for the people of God, and certainly less arrogant in our criticism. That C.H. Spurgeon said that, and I thought that was really good because as you mature as a Christian, you should be more tolerant of people's faults. Been thinking a lot about that because I have people in my life that I have to be tolerant of, their, of the things that they do that I don't particularly like. And I'm sure people around me have to tolerate the things that I do that they don't like. You know, let's just be tolerant of each other. Get that cemetery full and bury those faults somewhere where you can't remember them and don't bring them up all the time. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice.